Hi everyone, it's Isaac and I want to show you guys the newest bus from my shop, Dream Reality Studios. This is Brewster. This is a 2002 Ford E350 7.3 Power Stroke short bus. This is a four window with a wheelchair door, which is really rare. I've never seen one of these before. Uh, it's a great size, we really like it. It's about 18 feet bumper to bumper, and then it's the normal eight feet-ish wide bus inside. And it's got low miles, it's only got 167K on the clock, which is low. Anytime you can find a 7.3 with under 200K, you did something right. So we're gonna start with the exterior of the bus. Let's get into that right now. We are gonna start the exterior tour with the driver's side of the bus. Uh, I will start with paint brand new fresh paint and we use an oil-based enamel Which I think I bought one of the last gallons that Home Depot is selling so I've been using this paint for years. It works great. It's easy to apply. It was sprayed not rolled I think the paint turned out great and this is also a brand new color that we are in introducing this year We usually do a tan but just wanted to mix it up a little bit. We call it mint chocolate chip <laughs> now on the roof we did do a roof coating, so that's a, a Rust-Oleum Elastomeric roof coating. And also, I completely resealed every single body seam with automotive seam sealer. So not Home Depot caulk, stuff they actually use in the automotive industry and it works great. So there is no leaks up there. Also, every single window was taken out of this bus. The window seals were completely scraped reprimed cleaned up and we use sikaflex uh, 291 marine to completely re so everything in here is brand new no leaks nothing like that really expensive marine grade cock in all of the window seals it's all done right also if you come over here you're gonna notice we did two window deletes and we use window deletes from schoolie.com and we do have a discount code, you use code Scoliana if you want to get one, uh, you save a little bit of money, but really good steel, really good products. If you're building the bus, Scully.com has all kinds of rad stuff. We deleted these two windows because the shower stall inside is about right here. And it just gives us a little bit more room to kind of build things around. And it just eliminates a leak point of having a window, a window in the shower. This bus does have hot water. This is a hot water heater on-demand tankless hot water heater from rec pro again code scoliana if you want one of these save some money the cool thing about these is it exhausts outside so you don't got to worry about moisture and things like that inside your vehicle creating mold brand new works great this is our water fill this goes to a 40 gallon fresh water tank right underneath the bed and we also have a gray tank system, which is right under there. If I remember right, I think it's like 15, 20 gallons of gray. And it does have a remote ball valve. So you don't ever even have to get out of your vehicle to release your gray water. You can just hit a little 12 volt switch. Luxury. We have a hitch receiver front and back. So you can put a hitch on the, you know, on the, on the back and, you know, back or a rack on the front if you really want to. And we did replace the brakes and the turn signals with LEDs. These things work so much better than the little halogen bulbs. Work amazing. We also did delete the flashers. Again, we use schoolie.com plates. Everything is sealed right, no leaks. And also, uh, I'll talk about the solar real quick. So we have 200 watts of solar on the roof to a 50 amp charge controller, 50 amp DC to DC charger, and um, a trickle charger that just connects right here. So the rig can charge three ways, solar on the roof, as soon as the vehicle's turned on, and an extension cord right here. And it's going to a 200 amp hour lithium battery bank. All right, I should mention we did put locks on all of the doors. So there's a lock tab on the wheelchair door and a lock tab on the back door. Stainless steel, not gonna rust on you. And also, I should point out that there is a Dometic AC unit on the roof. So I usually don't put ACs in the buses, but this bus had one already in it, so I reinstalled it after I resealed the roof back up. Now, the way that works is that doesn't run off the 12 volt system. That's 110. So on the front of the bus, there's a little three prong plug 
and the way the guy used it before was he had a basket or a rack in the front hitch with a generator in it and anytime he wanted to run the AC he just ran the generator that's all it did was the AC and the 12 volt runs the rest of the bus as you can see down here we have a muffler now that little muffler exhaust goes to the diesel heater so this thing does have a diesel heater in here it'll cook you right out you know what I'm saying uh, I think that's gonna be it for the exterior of the bus so let's go inside and show you what we got going on over there now before we actually go inside I want to talk about this little area right here this is one of those deals I wasn't going to do anything, but everybody talked me into it. So I cleaned up the old stairwell, used a Russell M paint, repainted it, made it brand new. And then I put this um, outdoor carpet from Home Depot, cut it to fit in here and give it a little vibe. And then, as so you can see, we used two inch angle aluminum to trim out the whole floor. I think it looks great. All right. Now come on in and let's show you what's up. This is the driver's area of the bus. I really didn't do much to this area. I usually don't. I even left like the original school bus doors because I like buses. You know, you'll hear a lot of people talk about how they don't want it to look like a bus inside. That's not me. Like there's easier rigs to build into a house if you don't want it to look like a bus. I love buses. I kept it very school bus up here. Didn't do much, threw a seat cover on it. That's it, let's go this way. As you move over here, I always like to do just a little tiny closet dowel, which I forgot a hanger, but like having a little bit of hanging storage for like a couple coats or something, I honestly think is pretty awesome. So just easy breezy little closet dowel, hang some stuff, that's all that is. And then we'll move over here to the shower stall. A lot of people use two by threes or two by fours and do this whole thing. I frame everything with three quarter ply, including the shower stall. So this is three quarter inch plywood and the stall was red guarded to waterproof the ply. And then we use FRP to seal all the walls up. And then we use again, Sikaflex 291 Marine to kind of seal up all the cracks. And also we got this stainless steel shower pan. Now this thing is a bus building hack. So I've used, we don't, we're not working with a lot of ceiling height in a bus. And I've used a lot of the shower pans off Amazon and they usually lift the floor up like two inches sometimes. That's why you're gonna see a lot of skylights in showers in buses because you're just hitting your head as soon as you install um, one of those shower pans. The cool thing about this shower pan is the thickness of this steel that's how thick it is so you're not losing any head height the other thing too is you can custom order it to any size you want including the drain and the reason that matters is when you're buying those uh, shower pans off of Amazon like the drain is where it is right if you're not paying attention and you place your shower stall and you're cutting a hole through the bottom of your floor and you're hitting the frame of your bus that's no good right so the cool thing about this is you can kind of build your stall to fit your layout and then you can order the pan however big you want and the placement of the drain to miss your frame and, and hit like a nice place on the underside of your bus. These shower pans are from Our Way to Rome. You can custom order one. I'll put a link. I'll probably never not use one of these shower pans in a bus, to be honest. Also, as we come up here, uh, I have this curtain rod that kind of pulls out. So as you can see, the shower pan is sticking out a little bit. I didn't want to have the walls block off the bus. So what I did instead is I have this shower rod that pulls out like this, and then it kind of makes up for it. And then you can save your space inside and just push it back in when you're done. And then we also have a Thetford porta potty toilet in here for those bathroom necessities that happen. And we got our shower. It's just a wand and then it has an on off valve here on off valve here no water mixer comes straight from the hot water heater and we can control the temperature of the water at the controller of the water heater let's go this way welcome to the kitchen now we it's all custom cabinetry so none of this is pre-made and we have a two burner stove top right here from rec pro you can get a discount, use code SCHOOLIANA off their website. 
it's freaking nice, man. Like it's propane, it'll light, it, and it, you save your counter space and then you use it when you want to use it. And then over here, we do have a sink. It's pretty deep. Again, multi-use. Uh, it has, you can use it as a countertop and then you use it as a sink when you need to. And then the faucet comes out here when you need to get to, you know, those weird angles on them dishes. We also have a USB up here for, you know, charging whatever you want to do. And the remote for the hot water heater is right here. Just turn it on or off, adjust the temperature. And I guess I'll start over here. So this is a flip lock. They use these in boats. So I use soft close sliders, but this is just like an extra measure of keeping your drawer shut. So you just flip this up, move it to the other side, and then your drawer is unlocked. And I figure you can use this for, you know, silverware things like that the soft glow slider does a really good job of holding the drawer in but if you get a lot of weight in there sometimes you rip a corner too hard it'll still rock out so that's why i got the flip lock now it's not going anywhere down here this is where the water heater is at and our our sink water also is passing through here hot water heater is mounted in here and then this is also our uh, remote valve for the gray tank so you can dump your water right there and then you can close the gray tank there all secret squirrel stuff over here underneath here is just like random stuff uh, that's where the sink drops into things like that don't need to show that but over here we do have this is the controller for the 110 so you can just turn it off turn it on so all the outlets are just controlled on this switch this is our monitor for the electrical so this, you know, monitors the solar, the alternator, and the battery bank. And then these switches here are for the lighting. So as you can see, they're on off and then they'll also dim. So you can have really good control of your light. So you have two lights in the house. You have a light in the shower. And I also have a light underneath the bed. So if it's dark outside, you need to get into the garage area. You can see what you're doing. All the lights over here, water pump is over here. Now, what you just it turns the pump on or off, kills the power to it. The reason you want to do that, because if you don't do that and you develop a leak and you're just not around, the pump is just going to start pushing water right through that leak and then just flood your whole rig. Not good. This way, you know, the pump is only on when you want it on and when you're around. I think it's just, I think it's one of those things everybody should do. We do have overhead shelving above the kitchen area, kind of like a pantry, you know, you can put whatever you want to put there. I like doing these in the kitchens, that way you can see what you have. I'm the type of person, if I don't see the bag of chips, I don't think I have it and I buy it twice. So if I can see there's a bag of chips there, I know there's a bag of chips there. So I figure this is all kitchen area here. Over here, this is kind of the clothes area. So it goes from the open shelf to the clothes shelves and these just open up and I figure you can stack lots of jeans and whatever you want in there and then it does have a little lock right there to keep it from flying open. We do have more clothes storage over here so there's a trunk at the end of the bed. This just opens up. I mean I think it's plenty. The little bit of hanging storage up there with the clothes storage up here, clothes storage here. I think you're fine personally which brings us to the bed. All right, check out the bed. Now, this is a the four window buses. I always put the same size bed in to give myself more room in the build out. Now, this is a it's called a three quarter size bed. They use it a lot in RVs, so it's 48 by 75. A full size mattress is 54 by 75, so it's just a couple inches thinner, and I don't necessarily feel the difference. I think. It's great for one person, two people, it's still okay. But you know, it just gives you so much more room in the build out. That's why this floor window feels so big in here. Uh, the mattress is great. And we got this little Pendleton blanket on here. Just give it a little bit of vibe. This bus was completely ripped down to the bones. It was re, so everything was re, taken down to the bones and then re-sanded was rust treated and we have one inch foam board on on the floor and then it goes to osb and then it so there's kill mat first 
one inch foam board and then uh, OSB and then the flooring, that's the floor. And then all the walls were kill matted and then Havelock wall was stuffed in the walls. And then there was um, eighth inch plywood put up on that. And then the ceiling was all taken down and that was all kill matted and then Havelock walled and then cedared the whole thing. So everything in here has been redone and resealed and re-insulated. It's one of the first ones I've done that to. And everything was repainted. So everything was sanded down in here. All So everything in here is brand new. This is a brand new build out. All right, we're moving this way-ish. <laughs> so I got one of these little Sirocco 360 fans. If you don't know about these, you need to know about these. These things are freaking amazing helps keep this thing so cool and moves air around here so nice like i'll never not have one of those in a build also we got the max air fan in the middle to exhaust when we're cooking or using the shower or you know sweating in here that's our ventilation system that fan max air fan so over here this is a little bit different um iceco did uh sponsor this fridge so Iceco, thank you for hooking this up. These are great fridges. I'd buy it if it wasn't, you know, sponsored for this build. But a lot of people, including myself, put these on sliders and pull them out of something, which I was going to do too, right? So anybody who's built a bus knows how hard it is to kind of work with the wheel wells. And I don't, the couch was going to be like half the size it is now so that I could put the fridge on a slider and do all that. But then I was thinking about it. I was like, this thing is such a good countertop, opens from both ways. So I'll just put the fridge at counter height and use it as kind of divider, kind of a divider for the bed. And then also it's got some uh, USB, so you can charge your phone off this thing. Like, I don't know. I kind of really love this location of this fridge. I've never seen it done in a build before. And then right below it, we have again, the flip lock and we have another drawer i figure somebody can use this drawer for pots pans cups you know whatever stuff like that and boom flip lock won't come out and then there's the wheel well underneath this and there's just a little pocket for i don't know stuff and stuff <laughs> and i think i'm probably always in the four or five window buses gonna do the fridge this way it just leaves I don't know. I think it's the best use of space, personally. Let's go that way. Welcome to the day bed slash couch. Now, I've done a few buses at this point, um, and I've tried all kinds of different layouts. I've tried dinettes. I've done the slide out couches. I've never felt like any of them really felt right until the first time I did one of these. So I call this the day bed couch. So. I, you take the back off. I think it's big enough for one person to sleep on pretty comfortably. The one thing I've noticed with the pullout couches, I've had one in one of my own personal buses. We always do it for somebody to sleep on it. And it's like, what I didn't think about the first time around was most of our friends who have buses like this, they all have their own rigs. I can count on one hand the amount of people that I've ever slept in one of my buses with me. It, it makes it easy. It makes it easy to get to the storage underneath. There's nothing moving around. The one thing I've learned in all this too is like the easier something is to use or work with, the more you'll use it, the more comfortable it'll be. This is about 24 inches wide. I think it's 16 inches tall with the cushion and these were sewn by a, a seamstress. So. They're, they're done pretty well. Also, the one way that I make this really functional for me so you can lounge and chill here, you can sleep here, is the lagoon mount table at the end of the couch. So this little sucker can work as an armrest. You can push it over here out of the way, use it as an armrest in the space of the stairs that you're not gonna use for anything else. You can literally just push it out of the way and then you can pull it around and bam. You got a place that you can work, a place you can eat, I mean, I think it's great. And then this whole thing will just come out and you can store it somewhere else if you want to. I love this layout with the couch lagoon mount at the end of the couch. I haven't found anything that worked better yet. So uh, I should go over here and show you this. So also we have an outlet here 
and a USB. This is 110, and there's another one at the other end by the uh, the lagoon mount, so you could plug your computer and things like that. And then the diesel heater and controller is right here, and then the diesel heater vent outlet is right here, and you can kind of twist it around, put it wherever you want it to go. Over in the couch area as well, I have a little overhead cabinet over here. I don't go as wide when I'm above a sitting area because you don't want to be hitting your head coming in and out. But even just having this little like shelf up here, you could just stuff stuff in there is actually kind of nice. So overheads and shelves all the way around. And then I want to talk about my curtain system. I do a thing called snap curtains. So these are all the way around. Obviously we have them right there and they literally just snap up and snap off. So you can take these off, you can wash them, do whatever you want to do. And then they're just hanging by one of these and then you just drop it and it just unrolls and covers up your windows. And these are also blackout curtain material. So you're not seeing through these. And also they do act as an insulation against the window. I've used other types of fabric. These things honestly do really great. And you'll notice a big difference when you're running your heater with your windows wide open or when they're covered and it's nice. That's how I do my curtains. Nice and easy, easy to maintain, easy to take off, easy to work with. All right, this is the Brewster build. This is the latest build from my shop, Dream Reality Studios. This is a brand new build. Everything was done right on this one. We took it all the way down to the bones and brought it all the way back. Everything is brand new. It's my favorite bus I've built yet. And I'm really excited to list. So this bus is for sale. When you watch this video, it still might be for sale or it might be sold. I'm not sure. You can check the description below. Uh, but this is definitely my favorite build so far. We're getting better every time. We're, we're looking forward to, to building more buses and seeing what kind of things we do next. So again, this is a 2002 Ford 7.3 Power Stroke short bus. And it's got less than 200,000 miles on the clock. Diesel, freaking amazing. It's four window wheelchair door. It's a really cool rig. Let me know what you guys think about the build in the comments below. Did you like what we did in here? Would you do anything different? I think this is my favorite layout. I'll probably do this exact same layout in every four or five window bus I do next is how much I like it. Thank you guys for watching very much. If you like anything bus related and this is the first time you've ever found this channel, consider subscribing because all we do is build buses and do stuff in buses around here. This is Isaac signing out. Super stoked to share this build with you and hopefully I'll see you guys in another video. Peace out.